Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Shavua Tov, well, sort of. I know it's Tuesday, but we didn't get to say Shavua Tov yesterday. I hope that uh, if you did fast, that you had a meaningful, a spiritual fast. And welcome to the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land. I'm Raleen Marks, bringing you the news from Israel and the region every Monday to Thursday. However, this week, Tuesday to Thursday, on this platform and also on our YouTube channel. Check us out. We're at the Israel Brief. And if you click on the big red subscribe button, you too can bring the news from Israel out to the masses, which uh, we hope you do because it's not very often people get to hear the news uh, from Israel, at least not from the Israeli perspective. But enough about me bleating on. Let's take a look at those top stories. And it's all about the COVID-19 crisis in Israel, and it has been a massive crisis over the last couple of weeks. In fact, we're currently in a three-week lockdown, and it's particularly difficult because this is the high holy days in the Jewish calendar. We've just marked Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement that uh, we marked yesterday, and at the end of the week we will be going into Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, usually a very, very festive time of the year, very sociable time of the year, a time of the year where we welcome our many Christian friends from around the world who come to march in Jerusalem and come to sit in the big sukkah. And uh, rumor has it that the government could possibly extend our three-week seger or lockdown, as we call it, uh, for another two weeks. They're currently discussing this. This is because the numbers and the mortality rates are very, very high. Today, Israel has the dubious honor of surpassing the U.S. in the amount of deaths per capita. We've got more deaths per capita than the U.S., not a statistic that anybody wants to have. And our health minister, Yuli Edelstein, has said that Israel will come out of this lockdown period a lot more slowly than the last in order to try and cut back on those infections. And I'm also sad to report that over the last 24 hours, when we were all heading into lockdown and uh, all having to observe Yom Kippur in the solace of our homes, many people, at least 4,000 people, broke the lockdown regulations and were heavily fined for that. And scuffles broke out between an ultra-Orthodox leader and the police as uh, he blamed the police for breaking up a gathering of the ultra-Orthodox. But it's not just that sector of society uh, that has flouted uh, the laws. We also have to look at the protests that took place on Friday night as we went into this very, very, very tight lockdown and for these high holy days, there were still massive protests outside the Prime Minister's residence in uh, Jerusalem. And this has really, really angered many Israelis who are saying, you know what, we are all sacrificing at this time. Just be respectful. And uh, discussions also underway at the Knesset, at the Parliament Houses, whether or not to ban the protest, to cut back on the protest. But uh, the consensus is something has to be done because it doesn't look like it is equal standards. So uh, not a good situation for Israel with regards to COVID-19, but um, we hope that we will get those numbers out of control. In other news, we look to the USA and now to rookie congresswoman, although she's not so much a rookie anymore, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the far-left Democratic congresswoman, and she has angered many Jewish organizations in the U.S., including liberal Jewish organizations. She was invited by Americans for Peace Now, a left-leaning organization, to participate in the 25th anniversary memorial to assassinated Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, and she pulled out of it over the weekend saying that the facts of the memorial or the event was presented to her differently. Of course, that's BDS, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, who we know is anti-peace, pulling out or putting on the pressure for her to pull out of it. And it has raised a, a, a debate, a discussion that, uh, you know, where does the far left sit when it comes to issues of 
peace. Here is a left-leaning group inviting you to commemorate somebody who gave his life, who was assassinated by an Israeli right-winger in the name of peace. Uh, this is a time to honor somebody who paid the ultimate sacrifice and uh, she has pulled out of it and has left a very, very sour taste in many people's mouths. A very, very controversial decision by AOC. But let's talk better news and this time we're on the normalization track and it was announced earlier today that the UAE, our new friends in peace, our partners in peace, uh, they have uh, ambitions to send a spacecraft to the moon in 2024. Listen guys, we can help you. We sent one last year. Okay, so it crashed, but that's how we drive here in Israel. But uh, we still got there and now we're a partner in peace, so let's work together. But um, according to the UK's Guardian newspaper, the Saudis put the pressure on UAE and Bahrain to make peace with Israel. This is a very, very interesting. Uh, this is largely because of the threat that Iran poses to the region, but also because we are all waiting to see whether or not the Saudis are going to normalize ties with Israel. Other countries expected to uh, forge ties with Israel soon are countries like Oman and the Sudan and various others, but the big prize that everybody's waiting for is the Saudis. So this information is really, really interesting. But those are the top stories making headlines in Israel. I'm really hoping again that we get to a stage where COVID-19 is not our top story because we've got the situation all under control. But in the meantime, if you're in lockdown like we are here or just uh, responsibly social distancing, don't forget you can check out our online content at www.layoftheland.online. You can read Martine Alperstein, her account of what it is like to be not just in lockdown, but in bidud or quarantine, as we call it here in Israel. She shares some of her thoughts and feelings. It's up on our Facebook page. If you're there, give us a like, give us a share, give us a follow. We are a growing community and we would love you to be a part of it. Don't forget to also subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Israel Brief by clicking on the red subscribe button and interact with us and follow us on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5. That's Lay of the Land, the digit 5. And with the Tuesday edition of the Israel Brief, I'm Raleen Marks wishing you all good health and safety, and we'll chat again tomorrow.